Hello and welcome to this maths tutorial on the laws of indices. In this video we're looking at the answers to question 2 of our uh, laws of indices worksheet. So if you haven't seen that worksheet I strongly recommend uh, that you click the link in the description below to find the worksheet uh, so that you can watch the videos in order uh, and get a full grasp of this subject. So in question 2 uh, we're considering what are the um, special cases uh, of the laws of indices. So we've got some special cases to consider. Now up here we've got from a previous video we've got our uh, laws of indices, our three laws of indices that we found uh, by the application of logic uh, and seeing what happens when we multiplied these out. What we're going to do though is we're going to kind of stretch this all a little bit now and start to look at what happens when these uh, uh, when the rules are kind of forced beyond perhaps what we've done so far, we've done some pretty simple algebra. So let's see what happens when we start to uh, expand this uh, just a little bit. So let's just uh, have a look. First of all, uh, what happens, because we end up with some really quite interesting results when we do this. Let's first of all have a look at what happens. If we do x to the 3 divided by x to the 2, x to the 3 divided by x to the 2. So what's this going to look like? Well, we know from the second law of, of indices that we do uh, m minus n. x to the m divided by x to the n gives us x to the power of m minus n. So over here, we've got uh, a 3 and a 2. So we're going to say that this will be equal to x to the power of 3 minus 2, which becomes x to the power of 1. So far, so simple. But what does this actually mean, x to the power of 1? Well, let's just consider it for a moment. Let's let's write this out slightly differently. Let's expand this out. So we end up with, on the top of our division, we've got x times x times x. And then that is all divided by x times x. So this row represents x to the 3. And this represents x squared, x to the 2. Now, we already said in a previous video uh, that we've got, uh, if you multiply by x and then divide by x, you can cancel that operation out. So if we cancel this down, if we get rid of that x and that x, because if we multiply by that x and then divide by that x, essentially it never happened, we can cancel that one down and that one down. And what we're actually left with in the end is we've cancelled out the entire bottom row, which means that we're just left with x by itself. So what we can say is that if we have a number x and raise it to the power of 1, that is just simply equals to x by itself. So x to the power of 1 simply equals x. Now let's have a look at this and let's try flipping this around a little bit. So what happens if we do, because so far we've always been left with a positive number here. We've not actually uh, resulted in any of the calculations that we've done. We've resulted in a negative number. So let's have a look at this. If we do x to the 2 divided by x to the 3, so a new question now. Well, we just apply the same rule as we did before. We still apply the second law of indices. So we just kind of ruthlessly follow this logic and see what happens. So we end up with x to the power of 2 minus 3. Now x to the power of 2 minus 3 is going to leave us with x to the power of minus 1. x to the power of minus 1. So again, we look at this and we think, well, what does this actually mean? How can you take a number and raise it to a negative power? We kind of, we get that x squared means x times x, and we get that x cubed means x times x times x, and we've, we're starting to get ahead around x to the 1 just means x by itself. But x to the minus 1, what would that mean? Would it be minus x? Well, let's see if we can figure it out. Again, if we lay this out a little bit more like we have done up here, so let's lay this out like this. Let's say x times x, that's on the top. Try and get a straighter line this time. There we go. So we've got on the bottom now x times x times x. Okay, so on the top we've got x squared. On the bottom we've got x cubed. So what's that going to give us? Let's have a look. Uh, if we cancel this down just the same as we did before, so we can get rid of uh, this x and this x, because multiplying by x and dividing by x just cancels it out. We can get rid of this x and this x. Now what that leaves us with is nothing on the top 
and this little x by itself here. Now we can't put a zero here, because if we had zero times x times x, then this would always have just equaled zero. The whole thing would have been naught. So what we need to start thinking about now is a concept that I think of as being uh, like ghost numbers, basically. So what we've got here uh, is what could we do to this top row to introduce a number that we could use that wouldn't actually change its value? Well, if you take any set of numbers and multiply it by 1, so if we put a little kind of ghostly 1 here, like that. that's actually a rubbish one, so let's scrap that. Let's just get rid of that, and we'll put in a, a proper one. So what we've got here is if we put a 1 in there and multiply that top row by this 1, we can introduce that number without changing this at all. It doesn't alter what that value has. x times x is the same as 1 times x times x. We're not multiplying it by anything other than 1. We're not making it bigger. However, when we've cancelled these x's out, what it leaves us with is 1 over x. It leaves us with 1 divided by x, which leads us to the conclusion that x to the minus 1 is actually equal to 1 divided by x. Now what I suggest you do is on your worksheet you start to fill these in as we go along. So we've got x to the 1 is simply equal to x, and we've got x to the minus 1, which is the second part of this question, which leaves us with 1 over x. So x to the minus 1 is equal to 1 over x. So that's quite an interesting result that we've found there. Now let's just attempt the third part of this question, which is x to the minus n. So let's, let's try and break this even more. Let's try and take this a little bit further. Let's say, what about if we do x squared divided by x to the power of 4? Okay, now let's see what happens now. Well, we're going to end up with x to the power of 2 minus 4, which looks like that. So again, that's just applying the second law of indices, uh, that if we have a division, we uh, subtract this number from this number. So we've got 2 minus 4, and that leaves us with x to the power of minus 2. x to the power of minus 2. So what this now means is, what does this to the power of minus 2 mean? How do we raise something to the power of minus 2? Well, again, let's apply logic. Let's set this out differently. So we've got x squared. Uh, sorry, let's undo that too. Let's say we've got x uh, times x. So that represents the top part of this here, x squared divided by. And now let's do x to the 4. So we've got x times x times x times x, like that. And let's cancel this down where we can. So we can get rid of this x and this x. We can get rid of uh, this x and this x. And now we're left with, on the bottom here, we're left with x times x. We can't cancel the top down anymore. Now again, we introduce this idea that we've got a kind of a hidden one here that we don't normally show, but we can use it now. So we've got 1 over x times x. So how could we rewrite that now? Well, we could say that that is now 1 over x times x is equal to x squared, isn't it? So what we've actually got now is 1 over x squared. So we can say that x to the power of minus 2 is equal to 1 over x squared. So what that does is it brings us to this kind of general rule that we can apply. Uh, and I'll just uh, write this down here and then we'll, we'll scrap all this and get rid of this so that we can see. Uh, our next set of numbers. But if we have any uh, negative power, x to the power of minus n, then we can say that that will be equal to 1 over x to the power of whatever that number is. So if this is x to the minus 4, this will become 1 over x to the power of 4. So we've just replaced that n there with whatever number is there. So the negative part becomes 1 over and the n becomes the power on the bottom of the fraction there. And that is what uh, our third special case of the laws of indices produces. So copy that down onto your worksheet uh, and that will help you to remember uh, that's the law. Okay, so let's just get rid of all of this stuff off this page. So now we've got rid of those other equations, let's just have uh, a quick look at our next one, which is uh, number 4, x to the power of 1 half. 
x to the power of 1 half. So let's have a look and see if we can figure out what this means. Let's do this. Let's take x to the power of a half and multiply it by another x to the power of a half. Now if we do that, according to our first law of indices, which we've got over here, x to the m times x to the n is equal to x to the power of m plus n. So what that means is that we end up with x to the power of a half plus a half. Look a little bit more like a plus. So what that's going to then become is x to the power of 1. And we saw from our previous uh, special case that x to the 1 is simply equal to x. So that means then that x to the power of a half multiplied by x to the power of a half must just give us x by itself. So what that means is that we're taking some value here and multiplying it by itself and coming out with another value. So what that means is that we've got here uh, a square number. x must be a square number and if x is a square number it means that this must be the square root of x because the square root of any number is when you uh, take that number and multiply by itself uh, and get to the original number. So x to the power of a half then we can say is equal to the square root of x. x to the power of a half is equal to the square root of x. So that's quite interesting. But now let's just think about this. Uh, let's think about our next question. So if I just change my pen colour here so we can see a little bit of a contrast. So if we say uh, for question 5 we've got x uh, to the power of 1 over n. So let's just kind of take this logic and let's play with this a little bit. If we say what is x to the power of a third now? Well if we take x to the power of a third and we multiply it by x to the power of a third and times it by x to the power of a third we end up with uh, x to the power of according to our first law of indices uh, a third plus a third plus a third so that's going to look like this a third plus a third plus a third so that's going to give us x to the power of 1 uh, which again is simply x so what we've got going on here now is we can assume well, we don't have to assume, we can know that x to the power of a third is equal to the cube root of x. Because we're taking a number and multiplying it by itself, uh, and then multiplying it by itself again, and that's coming out with uh, our value of x. So therefore, one of these must be the cube root of x. So that's quite interesting. And actually, we could keep on going with this. We'd find that if we did x to the power of 1 over 4, then we'd end up with the fourth root of x and, and so on and so forth. So more generally what we can say is if we have x to the power of 1 over some number, whatever that may be, we can say that that is going to be equal to the nth root of x. The nth root of x. So there's our fifth rule laid out for us quite neatly there. So we've got x to the 1 over n is equal to the nth power of x. It's worth just noting as well up here uh, where we write this symbol that means uh, it actually just means the root of and then there should be a number here to indicate which root it is uh, and it's just kind of convenient that when we talk about square roots we don't put uh, the number 2 in there but really we should to show that that is the square root because you can have uh, lots of other roots as well. So uh, we've got uh, five out of our six special cases now, so let's have a look at our final special case, which is x to the zero, x to the zero. So if we come down here and look at this, we've got uh, x to the power of zero. Just change my pen color again. Go for a dark blue this time, somewhere like that. So we've got x. Let's come out a little bit more violet than I meant. Uh, so we've got x. Uh, to the power of 0. Now what does x to the power of 0 mean? Well again let's play around with our rules and see what we can find. Let's take x cubed and divide it by x cubed. And what we end up with now is we have x times x times x all divided by x times x times x 
So if we uh, perform our logical operation with this according to our second law of indices, we end up with x to the power of 3 minus 3, and that becomes x to the power of 0. So whatever this is, it equals this. So let's see if we can break this down a little bit more logically. So when we've got this, we've got x times x times x over x times x times x. So if we just cancel down our operations, we can keep on doing that. And we end up with... Uh, a lot of people at this point make the mistake of saying, well, surely we've got 0. We've got nothing. So x to the power of 0 must be 0. That's not actually correct, because if you remember on one of the other special cases we looked at this, we said, what about if we've got these ghost numbers under here. So this one times doesn't change the value of this top row. This one times doesn't change the value of this row. But we do end up with 1 divided by 1, which is simply 1. And that kind of makes sense, because if you take some number, whatever we put in here for x, it could be 2, 3, 4, pi, e, whatever. If we take that value and then divide it by exactly the same value, which is what we're doing here, we're going to end up with 1. Therefore, x to the 0 is equal to 1. So there we have our sixth and final special case that develops from the laws of indices. So hopefully you've got all these copied down onto your worksheet, and hopefully this video has been of value to you. Uh, so move on to the next set of questions, and then uh, watch the following video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.